You're listening to the Jim Boy Star Podcast, episode 105, titled Dragon Quest V The Podcast, Part 2. Welcome everyone, before we get into this next episode, I do realize for the past couple of weeks, and probably the upcoming weeks, the, the upcoming weeks, there's going to be differences in the sound quality, I do apologize, I am still trying various things to uh, to get things back the way they, w- they were before, but uh, it's just not happening as soon as I'd like it to happen, um, but thank you for bearing with me. So we have this week and next week for the rest of the Dragon Quest uh, Five series. Uh, there's a chance that we might do Dragon Quest VI, um, but I will say after the series is over, that's when you're going to get a movie review that you heard about a few weeks ago. All right, maybe more than a few weeks ago. Like back in December. Like back at the second annual television draft halfway show. It's Snow Day. So after Dragon Quest V, you're going to get that movie review of Snow Day. God, I hate snow. I hate it so much. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a continuation of the Dragon Quest V podcast. Hello everyone, this is Jim once again, and it's time to talk about some more Dragon Quest V. Here with Kenshin1913, a.k.a. Pete. How are you doing? I'm doing good. All right, so we're on the second generation. Well, well, why don't you give a... What was the last time, just towards the end, give a recap of that? Right, so what ended up happening is uh, your dad was sent to watch over this prince named Harry. And uh, he pretty much got kidnapped. And we went to go save him. And he got kidnapped by some shady people. And they killed my dad. But the last thing he said was that your mother is still alive. And you must find... And then me, or the hero and Harry, got sent to slavery yes. for 10 years. But now we pick it up for after those 10 years, and your age now is what again? I know I asked this last time, too. Right, it's 16. You're 16. You and Harry are both 16 years old. All right, interesting to know. I'll bring that back around later in the show. Go ahead. Let's Let's talk about what is it like being a slave. Well, pretty much it's just like you would think it would be. It's pretty much mind-numbingly terrible. And pretty much you and Harry, there's only a few people within the whole thing that actually have this willingness to live. Like, everybody else is pretty much beaten down and all that. So you go talk to Harry, who's hanging out on the... You're pretty much on top of this mountain, and you're building this temple or something. So, uh... You talk to Harry, and he pretty much tells you how, how, like, sorry he feels about what happened to your father. And he's like, if we ever escape here, I'll help you find, you know, your mother, this, that, and the other. So you head back downstairs, and you go to sleep. And a lot of the people here are talking about, like, oh, you know, when they finish this thing, they're going to set us free. And there's a lot of people there, like, that's not happening. You know, they're, gonna, they're just, just going to kill us. I mean, do you, do you ever notice how, like, when people get tired or whatever, they just disappear? And uh, so the next morning, you wake up, you're still a slave, and you find out that there's this new girl that ha- has arrived. Her name is Maria, and she's getting beat up. And so Henry, you and Henry end up taking on the two uh, uh, boss guys that are that are beating up this one woman. And you pretty much, at this point, you don't have any equipment besides, like, slave gear. Right. And yeah, yeah, all the equipment was taken away. And what and what else is, is giving you a disadvantage here? Right. At this point, the um, you don't have any weapons. You, and the only thing, uh, you don't have any weapons, really. I mean, I the thing I you... I you also only get, like, one HP. No, actually, because it's the next day, you, uh, you're actually healed up, I believe. Oh, okay. Or I you might need... So your HP get your HP goes down as the day goes on. Right. Yes. And uh, what what ends up happening is the only way that you can beat those guys is kind of through magic. I mean, you can kind of use physical attacks a little bit, but uh, you know, magical is the way to go. So you beat those guys up, and then the rest of the guards show up and they take you and they throw you in prison along with the girl. Mm-hmm. So then Henry or Harry, he's kind of got like this weird upbeat kind of attitude throughout this whole thing where he's kind of like laughs off. Like he's totally done like a, I guess it would be called a 180 from where he was when he was a little kid being a big 
jerk and like uh, and like a trickster and, and a jerk. And he's to kind of become like a really loyal dude or whatever. So, by the way, I do want to mention because you you have mentioned Maria, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I think that she's one of the most forced characters in this entire game, on the right. audience. And we're gonna get again. That's kind of, uh, we'll get more into that later on. Um, but yeah, no, Harry is is completely changed. He, uh, yeah, he's. Do you think humble is the right word? Like yeah, I, I would say humble for yeah. sure. He's like a totally new man, like turned over a new leaf kind of mm-hmm. thing. Like obviously, ten years of slavery will definitely uh, definitely change you, you know. Hopefully in a good way. But um, right. so you're locked up, and uh, pretty much this guard comes over, and he's he comes over, and he's like, "Thank you for rescuing my my uh, sister Maria. I'm gonna let you guys get the hell out of here along with my sister." He's like, well, "You guys gotta get out of here, and you gotta live." And so he puts you in a barrel. Or I think it's supposed to be even a coffin kind of thing, because that's what they do with the people who die or who end up getting really tired. They throw them in this thing and they, and they throw them overboard. So right. he he tells them he tells them your stuff's in this barrel. Get in and go. So you you get launched out this barrel outside this giant mountain down the waterfall, and you're drifting for some time. And eventually you get to this this. Um, what would you call it? Like a sanctuary, kind of like a cathedral kind of place. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all nuns, right? Right, it's an abbey. There we go. That It was an abbey. Um, why didn't he do this sooner? Why didn't he do this with Maria sooner than this? It seemed like a, a solid plan that he knew all about. Yeah, uh, so Maria's brother, his name is Josh, and I'm not sure why. Maybe because he, she just became a slave, and if you talk to him during the time that you are a slave, he's kind of like, oh, man... I can't believe they're going to make my sister a slave. He's like, uh, you know, and he's like, what are you doing? Get back to work kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So he's like one of the guys there who kind of has like a little bit of a soft spot for some of these people that are there. Right. And so we're at the Abbey. We find out, we wake up, we're all changed. We're in the uh, the gear that we had when we turned into a kid, which I'm surprised it still fits at this point. Good point. I was, I yeah. was going to bring that up too. Right. And so... And so it's Harry and Maria, or Harry and the hero, are pretty much going to head out on the task to go find the hero's mother and find out what, what's been going on. Because at this point, when you're at the Abbey, you have no idea where you are like in relation to where you were before. So so uh, pretty much Maria's staying there. She's like, no, I'm going to become a nun. And Harry's kind of like, oh, man, that sucks. That would have been cool if you came. Because as you talk, you do some party talk, you find out that like Harry's kind of got some feelings for her yeah. and stuff, and uh, so you leave. Maria wishes you well, and you head up north to this. Uh, you head up north to this town called Fortuna, mm-hmm. which is which is like a big casino town, and that is where you you get the cart, which or the um, the caravan, which is the one of the most important items in the game, because once you get that, you're able to recruit monsters. I think this now, would be a good time for you to probably chime in on the the system of recruiting monsters. Right. So um, pretty much every – well, not every monster, but there's a certain set of like 30 different monsters that you could recruit throughout the game, starting with some of the weakest guys like Slimes and and uh, Drakies and stuff like that, and you can recruit up to even more badass monsters. So what ends up happening is – there's like a scale on like recruitability. So if they have a high recruitability, you can actually recruit them easier. And what you have to do pretty much is just fight them in battle. And once the battle's over, they'll pop up and they'll be like, oh, this guy wants to join your group. So, is this a hidden scale or is this a scale that you look up online? You can look the scale up online. They now have that. But like in the game, I don't know if they do. I don't know if they do have one. They might. Because uh, I'm thinking about it now, there's like a book that you can get that shows off all the monsters, mm-hmm. and it might and it might show you that scale. Oh, is it the official Dragon Quest V Gamer's Guide or something like that? Yeah, but I believe there's also one in game that you can like look at all the monsters you defeated oh, okay. and all that stuff. So it might actually be over there too. So now, in it's your kind of... in your experience playing this game, and Lord knows you played it so many times, including times that you had to research it for a let's play. Mm-hmm. Um, would you have any advice on who or, like, what monsters you should aim for towards the beginning? Oh, in the beginning, honestly, just get whoever you can get. All right. Slime, slimes, there's these guys called brownies. They got these big hammers with the hoods. There's uh, drakies. There's, 
There's a lot of different ones right in that area, and they make it really easy for you to recruit them right away. But the whole thing about this part now is that you get these monsters, and most of the time, or all the time, they don't come with any equipment. So at this point, it, it, they kind of are, um, <clears throat> they're kind of hard on your on your bank account. You know what I mean? Mm. Just just having to collect all the equipment for them. But uh, eventually, when you get them with decent gear, they're they're actually really good really good uh, party members. But at this point, I would recommend a slime. A Drakey a, and a Brownie. Those are probably yeah. the, the three I would recommend at this point. Now, we're so, going to go by, like, as we go through this and we get to a section, if you think, like, someone should get a certain monster. Right, right. I could do that. All right. So, so uh, when we're in this town, we actually learn about um, there's a town up north that got decimated and, uh, and like, all the village is, like, totally destroyed. So we head up, uh, we head up over there. And and we um we find out that it's actually Santa Rosa or uh, Wheelbrook, which used to be uh you know your hometown pretty much, and it's all destroyed. And you find out it was these Cogberg soldiers that did it, pretty much. Mm -hmm. They they came in after the Queen or after the uh, Harry was disappeared. They came over there and they they because they knew pa uh, Papas was from there, so they came over there and they destroyed the town and and uh, took took a bunch of the people, uh, put them in jail and everything. Right, because, so, because for all the king knows, like, his son's gone because of your father. Right, right, right. And the thing about it, too, at this point, I don't remember if you find out now or you find out a little later, pretty much the reason why the king in the first in the first generation, the Harry's dad, the reason why he was trying to have Harry become a good dude was because he was actually sick and he was dying and he wanted him to become a good ruler. Hmm. But that didn't end up happening, and he ended up dying, you know what I mean? And right. then pretty much since H Harry was gone, or Henry was gone, they uh, pretty much had his brother, who I believe is Dale, or... Uh, Wilbur Dale. Wilbur, Wilbur, yes. Uh, his uh, brother, his half-brother Wilbur becomes the new king. Mm -hmm. So anyways, you find out that uh, your dad was hiding something in the cave in uh, Wheelbrook. So now that you have access to the raft, you can actually head through the cave... You fight new monsters. At this point, if you can't, if you have enough patience, there's, a, I believe there are metal slimes. You can recruit them. If you have enough patience, oh go for it. Oh, my God, you have to, so, have to have so much patience, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll have to fight them a ton. And I don't think there's any ability in the game or any item in the game that helps, um, that helps like, uh, you know, uh, make it a better a better rate to capture the monsters or whatever. Right. To make, to make them recruitable. So we get down to the bottom of the cave and... We find this sword and uh, a letter from your dad saying that if if you're reading this letter, it means that I'm dead. Pretty much, I'm, I was looking for the legendary hero so I can enter in this area called Nadiria and save your mother. And he's like, if you're gone, he's like, I can't use this sword, so I wasn't the legendary hero. And he's like, maybe you are. So you pick up this you pick up this uh, sword. Obviously, you can't equip it because you're not the legendary hero, so you just kind of hold on to Can it. Can you just talk about how much, like, that's probably kind of a shock? Because very, a lot of times when you play these games, and I'm not just even talking about the Dragon Quest series, like a, a role-playing game, you're almost always the hero. Yes, this is the, yes. a very rare time that you're not. Yeah, you are the main character, but you are not technically the legendary hero. Right. Which is which is kind of cool. I kind of like that because it's like, oh, okay, so maybe we'll meet him through our travels or something. You know what I mean? Right. So we leave and we head over to uh, Wheel, uh, not Wheelbrook, but um, where that? Uh, what's the name of Bianca's town? I can't remember. Um, wow. but we head over there. We head over there. Roundbeck. There we go. Roundbeck. Okay. We head over to Roundbeck and we learn that Bianca isn't there because. You know, we went back because we heard, oh, maybe Bianca's still here. Apparently, they they sold the villa, they sold the inn, and they left. They hit, they left town. So, uh, you spend the night there, and this is where the there's like a little turning point for Harry, where he's like, you know what, you know, I feel bad about what what happened to your dad, but you know what, I want to see what's going on in Cogburg, because I I want to see what's happening and see what what's going down because you know they killed the whole vill you know they destroyed that village mm -hmm. so he's like so he's so he pretty much asked you while you're sleeping if it which is kind of dumb but uh <laughs> you know okay can we go over there and check it out and of course you're gonna say yes right so we head off over to cogberg 
where where we find out that the queen dowager her name is i believe she pretty much is running the show wilbur is is kind of more of a puppet mm-hmm. so he, you you go and you you you're able to get through the guards cuz harry's with you and you're able to meet wilbur and he pretty much tells you that there's something in the castle that'll help you figure out what's going on with your uh with your step i guess a stepmother is that a stepmother it would yeah. be harry's stepmother cuz remember yes. the, wilbur is her son Right. But the king okay. has, that's actually the king had, Harry is the king's son. Right. But they were in front, they don't both have the same technically mother and father. Right, right, right. So, yeah, he, he, basically uh, Wilbur is that lady's mom, but not, but Harry's, but, and Harry's father. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so you also, while we're sneaking through the castle, we actually find the other queen, and she's down in the dungeon, and she says that, Whoever is ruling as her is not really her. So pretty much Wilbur tells you to go find there's a, some book or something. You'll find about a tower with a magic mirror. Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, you, head o- you, head, you find out about that and you warp over there to this tower, but you can't get in. And the reason why you can't get in is because, um, because you need like a maiden, a pure, a pure mating or whatever. So you head back to the Abbey, which is just north of there, and Maria is actually going to help you out through this part, which is kind of cool. Although, it'd be kind of cool if she actually, like, was like a party member, maybe like a... What do I... I don't understand, though. Uh, So, wait a minute. Because I barely remember this this part. Um, Right. So, what was the definition? What did you just say that they have... that, That you're not allowed to the tower Y again? Because you have to have like a pure maiden or something what like does a that holy, mean? a holy maiden. Pretty much, oh, it's just like just a, oh, so anyone from that nunnery could have shown right. up for this. Okay. Right, right, right. And so she, she uh, is gonna go along with you. And now at this point, one of the monsters that I forgot to Wait mention. Wait a minute, time what? out. No, I'm still thinking about about this. She just got there. I would say tops a week ago. I don't go to college for one right. week and they're like, oh, you're a doctor now. Right, right, right. Yeah, she. I guess she's a fast learner or something. I, I'm not. I'm not sure how that works. Honestly, Jim, I I really question the amount of time that is spent like between in this, in this uh, what do you call it? This generation because it feels like maybe it feels like a month maybe went sure. by or I, something. I agree with this definitely. Like the yeah, time, because the time's a little fishy here. Yeah, because it doesn't seem like you know you you're traveling to different places the in night day night day night you know. Yeah, they have, so bigger, I, oh, they have almost as big a problem as the day-night system as, in my opinion, The Walking Dead has. Right, right, right. So uh, one of the monsters that you can actually recruit at this point, if you're near Cogburg, which I highly recommend, is a, is a uh, uh, Slime Knight, which is um, one of the best monsters in the game because they get healing, good attack power, great defense. They're like one of the best monsters in the game, and you'll get them right near there. All right, so you say saying get a Slime Knight... Do any of these monsters, like... Well, I'm sure they do. I was going to say, are they capped at some point? Meaning, Uh, like, do they only go up a certain amount of level and then that's it? Right, yes. There are some monsters that do have caps. Like, some of the later monsters, their caps might be, like, level 30. But for the ones that you get in the beginning of the game, or the beginning of this generation, they're pretty much 99 in the very beginning. Like, Brownies, Slimes, Drakeys, Slime Knight. You know, those guys didn't go all the way to 99. Mm Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so we go up this tower, and we find the Mirror of Ra, which is uh, pretty cool. It's yep. pretty much that that item that keeps popping up in every game. Yeah, I think it has been in every game, right? Yeah, at this point, yeah. Sin- the- since uh, the only one is one, pretty much, it hasn't showed up. But, oh, that's uh, true, that is true, yeah. But, uh, so we get over there, we get back to Cogburg, and uh, Wilbur pretty much goes upstairs. He's there with his mother and the uh, fake queen How so did you have she to escape i believe wilbur went down into the uh dungeons and got her oh okay so you use the mirror you find out there's a monster you beat the queen oh by the way maria is with you during this part i'm not exactly sure why is. yeah and so you beat this monster and pretty much all is well now at cogberg which is kind of, this part here is kind of sad because harry's like yo i'm gonna stay behind and help my brother be the king here and help him you know rule because he says i'm not going to be king even though i should be because he's like you're already king you're you know wilbur you're already king let's just keep it that way i'll be your advisor which i think is pretty cool and pretty and again it shows like 
a very how much Harry has uh, matured because right. if it was the 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 kid version and like you know Wilbur had a toy, I'm sure he would argue for why he should have the toy and not Wilbur. Right, right, right. And so now that uh, Cogberg pretty much they're letting the boats go again because there was a point where you could go to the harbor where you and your dad first came from mm -hmm. and that heart and that harbor was controlled by Cogberg and they wouldn't let out any ships. So it's kind of like, you know, the uh, plot wall or whatever. So now that those, those boats are going again, they pretty much tell you that if you're looking for Zenithian equipment, you're going to head down to a uh, um, monster, M monster Ferrato, yeah, that's, which that's is always been a tough name to say. Right. And there's a guy, there's a guy there who apparently has some Zenithian gear that you could find because at this point you're looking for the Zenithian gear in case you run into the hero and then you can give it to him right. or her or her. But anyways, so you head over into this ship, you head to this town. Um, what the hell is the name of the town? I can't remember the See, name. I'm really of... bad with names too. I, I don't think I wrote any of them down in my notes for recap either. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but you head to this town. It's pretty much a port town. And uh, you you going into the end, you know you you're the, you're new here. It's just you and your monsters. I always call this part the saddest part of the game, because one well not like saddest as in like emotionally sad, but like it's just a hero and he's traveling alone without anybody. Like it's just I mean it's just his monsters, but he doesn't really have like a really personal connection to any right, of these the, monsters. Yeah, that you just met them. Right, and so you go into this town, and uh, you learn, you go to the bar, because that's where you usually find out new information, and there's this one guy getting bullied by, by a bunch of uh, bunch of dudes, and so you pretty much beat those guys up, and then this guy asks you to come and get rid of a monster for him in his town called Hay. So you're like, okay, he pays you a good amount of money, I think it's like 2000 up front, and then he'll give you the other 2000 when you when uh, you get rid of the monster. Right. So you, so you head south to Hay. You hear about this monster that's uh, terrorizing the village, but you hear that he's not like really killing anyone or attacking anyone. And if you go there at night, you'll actually see a shadow of the monster come in, like steal some wheat, and then run away or something like that. Yeah. So you talk, you talk to the guy. The guys, the people there, are kind of like, oh no, we don't like outsiders or whatever. And um, you pretty much go to this cave where the monster is supposedly there. You go in the cave and you find this big giant cat. All right, so at this point, if you don't have Bianca, because it, I, honestly, the first time I played this game, I didn't notice that Bianca's ribbon wasn't in my inventory for some reason. Mm -hmm. You have to have you have to have Bianca's ribbon, and if you don't, you can just run away from the battle because you, you're fighting this cat, and you really don't do any damage to him. I was just gonna ask, is, do, can you actually beat the cat? No, you cannot beat. I didn't you think cannot so. beat this cat. No, you always do like one damage or like very little damage. You're really not much, and he doesn't really attack you too much either. So it's like it's kind of like a stalemate kind of thing. So if you use Bianca's ribbon on him, you'll find out that this cat is actually Saber or Barongo, your your kitty buddy from way back when. And now you're reunited with a monster that you actually have a connection with. So it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And also you get you get uh you get Pancrance's uh, sword, which is pretty good. It's actually a pretty good weapon. Uh, pretty much through the remainder of the second generation if you uh if you play your cards right Did, wait a minute so i don't think i've remembered that so the sword the the saber had it yeah what ended up happening i guess was after you know, he that... died then he took and they left saber by himself he must have not, they didn't take the sword i don't know yeah, why he they did. wouldn't take the sword meaning yeah yeah he he just saw the sword and he took it with him and and then, honestly, I talked about this in my Let's Play. I was like, I don't know how he got from over there to over where he was now. I have no idea. So right. maybe maybe he stole weight on a ship or something. I have no idea. But no, what, what I'm saying, though, is I don't know why the enemies back in the first generation didn't say, oh, look, a sword. We should probably take this. Uh, I think because they blew him up and maybe... I guess, like, the only, yeah. they like, the oh, no one's going to do anything to us. Right, yeah, and the only thing that might have even survived was the sword or something, mm -hmm. so... So you head back to Hay, and pretty much everybody's pissed at you because they're like, oh, you and the you and Saber were working together, and it's like, uh, not really, but... So they pretty much give you the money and they tell you to get the hell out. Shoo. So uh, from there, you head back up to the... Uh, what is it called? The uh, the port town. Mm -hmm. And you find out about this old dude who's trying to revive spell, like ancient spells that like have been gone for good. Mm -hmm. 
and, and so you head over there. I uh, Zooming Gale is what it's called in the um, remake version. So you head to this place. It's like a maze. You go and talk to this old man, and he's talking about how he's trying to uh, bring back the return spell. And if you think about it, at this point, you're he's like, you're like bring back the... <laughs> yeah. Well, if you th you think about it, it's kind of interesting because, like, this spell, I guess, was like um, like sealed away, right? And the only per character who could use it at this point was the Bishop Laja guy, right? Okay. Yeah. And and so it's kind of an interesting. Uh, like story point in the fact that like they sealed this spell away so no one could use it. And, uh, at this point, this guy is trying to unseal the spell. Mm -hmm. So he tells you to go get some herb at night. You have to do it at night. So you go get this herb, you come back and he makes you the zoom spell and then you warp away. And, uh, then you can go back there. And then you hear about where this, uh, <clears throat> this master Ferrado, uh, town is. And you kind of head, you head over to that area and over there, you actually hear about this woman named Nera, and you hear about um, you hear about uh, something that was going on in Cogburg. So now you warp back to Cogburg, and you find out that Harry got married to Maria. Right. And at that point, it's like he's like, "Oh, you know, I couldn't find you, so I couldn't have you at the wedding. We got married." And it's like, "What?" It's like, "Dude, I'm your best friend. You can't." Also, you, couldn't, you know, you, yeah. you you said earlier about how it was said. About like when the hero went by himself because he had monsters who he basically had just met. Yeah. I mean, Harry pretty much just met Maria. Yeah. I mean, he saw her in this the in a, the. This is like a. Uh, it should be at the point of a Carly Ray Jepsen situation. Yeah. Hey, I just yeah. met you, and this is yeah. crazy. So here's my number. That's where yeah. it should be. Not marriage. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy how it just, it just like boom happens like so fast. I mean. He met her when she was a slave and all that. It's crazy. So eventually we head off to uh, the town with, uh, with the nobleman, the wealthy nobleman, um, Mr. Briscoletti. And his daughter meets you at the, at the, uh, at the gates where you, where you stop the dog. And then she's like, ah, thank you for saving my dog. And then you go back and you do all this investigation and you talk to everybody. And pretty much the, the, uh, Mayor of the town, Mr. Briscoletti, the rich man, he's pretty much trying to get his daughter married. So you go you go into the, his house, and he pretty much says, you got to get two rings, one of fire and one of water, and then you'll be able to marry my daughter, Nera. And at this point, the, if you're playing the DS version or even the uh, Android or iOS version, you can actually marry a third daughter mm -hmm. at this point. I mean, second daughter, I'm sorry, second daughter at this point if you wanted to. You meet Deborah. She's kind of a B. Nara's kind of, Nara's kind of like the nice, uh, the nice one, and then Deborah's kind of like the real bitchy one. Right, of course. So, uh, pretty much what you do is you head over to this big volcano where the fire ring's at, and you meet this guy. His name's Crispin. He's also trying to win over Nara's heart, but uh, he pretty much fails in the very beginning of the um, the uh, volcano. So you get down, you fight this nasty monster. And you get this in the middle of the volcano, you get the fire ring, and boom, you got one down. So you go see Mr. Briscoletti. He says, all right, the water ring is somewhere where a bunch of water. You got to go get it. I'm going to lend you my boat. So you go up, and you, you can't get by this gate because you got to head north. Mm -hmm. There's like a cave with waterfall, and you got to head north. So you go into this small town, and you meet an old friend, Bianca. And uh, she, she, you guys kind of catch up on, like, what's been going on and all this stuff. And then she agrees to go with you to go and find this water ring. So she opens up the lock or the gate so you can go through the gate, and then you go into this water cave where you pretty much find the water ring. And as you're going through it, Bianca will talk about, like, oh, man, it's been so long, I can't believe, you know, we had so much fun back then. And then kind of, like, near the end when you get the ring, she kind of starts putting on, like, the... Uh, the like sympathy thing, like or the like, wo uh, not woe is me, but kind of like, uh, like I wouldn't say jealous, but she's like, oh, you know, you know, kind of like, oh, feel bad for me, kind of thing. Right. And like, all right, so you get, so you get back and you find out that you got the water ring and the fire ring, and so you have to decide, because at this point, Mr. Briscoletti's like, oh, you got feelings for Bianca too. All right, you might be able to marry her, and he's like, if you do, I'll p I'll spring for the whole thing. So now. You have a choice to make between marrying Bianca, your longtime uh, lady friend. You got Nera, this woman that you kind of just met, right? 
and you saved their dog, and I guess there's some sort of... I mean, again, uh, Harry just met Maria, too. I'm always going to come back to that. Right, love at first sight kind of thing. Although you did meet them as girls back on the boat, but that was like so long ago. Let me ask you this, because I I remember that, like in the, and I don't think we even mentioned that in the first generation. Right. That we that they meet them, but I think is that a bonus where, like, in the original game, that scene doesn't even happen. Yeah, that that is a bonus. That kind of like sets you up a little bit, and then in the in the remakes, they kind of just set you up so it's not like. Oh, love at first sight. Even though technically, it, maybe it's technically love at second sight at this point. But right. um, but yeah. So you can either marry Nera, Bianca, or even Deborah. She comes down. And she's like, you can marry me too. She's pretty much like a domineering lady. You know what I mean? Right. So, so during the night, you talk to everybody in town. They let you sleep at the inn for free. Pretty much, this is a really big decision. By the way, my favorite part of this entire thing, and I remember laughing pretty hard when this happens, is. They don't allow you to use the zoom spell. No, they don't. They don't let you. They don't let you warp out of there. They're like, oh no, you gotta, you gotta stay here. There's more important stuff to do here. Right. So pretty much, um, <clears throat> at this point, you can honestly pick whichever, uh, whichever bride you want. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask you. So here's where we're gonna break down a little bit about like each each bride because I don't know. You're, I mean, you're the one that's gonna tell us now. Yeah. What is the over? Is there an overall difference? I mean, other than the fact that, good thing they all have different colored hair. Right. Right. Um. Pretty much, Bianca. She's a. She's more of a. She doesn't learn. Um. <clears throat> well, I'll start off with Nera. All right. Nera is. Uh. She's kind of weak. She's kind of like a wizard, but she gets like a couple of healing spells. Every. Every. Uh. Each wife does get. Uh. Pretty much eighty percent of all the same spells. You know yeah. what I mean? So pretty much Nera, she, her advantage is she she's like more of a mage and she heals, and she does get like a nice uh, attack spell near the end. Uh, Bianca is a little more stronger than Nera. She doesn't get any healing, but she gets a uh, more um, like single targeting spell, right? Which are pretty good. And then Deborah, she pretty much she pretty much is like super physical. She has like these uh, weapons that let you attack twice, and she has the highest strength out of all three of the out of all three of the ladies. So she can really put a hurting down. When you level them up, <clears throat> so usually I I go for Bianca because it's like, if you think about it, it just seems like that's the natural choice because like you were friends. Apparently you have. I mean, she also you know, drills it into you when you go on that the quest for the ring. Right, right, right. Yes, they she does. She totally does. So it makes you almost feel bad if you don't. Right. Pick her. You know what I mean? Like it's a sympathy thing. So. And speaking of things that should make you feel bad, should make her feel bad. That she didn't even invite her own father. Right, right, right. Yes, she doesn't even do that if you pick her. But, like, if you pick now that Nera... You mention it, I don't think you even mentioned that there was a loss in the family. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. When you get over to Bianca's uh, home, or her new place where she lives, uh, Battenberg, I believe it's called, pretty much uh, her father, who was the sickly one, is still alive, but her mother passed away. Right. Which is kind of odd, but I mean, I guess it adds a little bit more uh, story to her, her like background, I guess. Uh, but because uh, they left, they pretty much left, and then her mom passed away. Mm-hmm. But um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so the reason, one other reason why I picked Bianca is because if you think about it, like, I mean, Deborah kind of like stays alone for the rest of her life because she's kind of like a bitch, you know what I mean? Right. And and Nera actually, she and she's actually in love with Crispin already. That's so the I always, other thing, right? Yeah, you're like, oh, well, they kind of want to be together regardless. Yeah, so I, right, so I always feel weird when I'm like, all right, I'll pick her and break up that relationship, you know? <laughs> right. So either way you go, you get there's a wedding. Either it's at a church if you're with Bianca, or in the remakes, uh, Mr. Briscoletti owns this big gambling ship where you get married on this gambling ship. By the way, it's around this point, right before you make the decision, where I believe... Bianca and Nera get sucked into a giant hole that brings us to Dragon Quest Heroes. <laughs> yeah, yes, based on yes. What, based on what I've how I played that game, I was like, all right, I see when when this is, and that's why I kind of wonder about the Crispin thing now, because Crispin was not mentioned at all in Dragon right. Quest Heroes. Yeah, so maybe she. I mean, like, how deep oh. are those feelings? How deep right. is your love, Nera? Right. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, before the wedding, they ask you to go and get a, a veil, 
um, and you go back to Battenberg and get the veil and then come back. And I always joke around saying that that's like the bachelor party is like, oh, you're going, you know, just the dudes. We're going to go get, uh, we're going to go get, uh, go get this veil and then we're going to come back. And now it's like, boom, that's it. We're getting what married. What a horrible bachelor party. I <laughs> yeah. can just imagine like, hey guys, well, we just got to go to, uh, I, I don't know where veils are. Give me somewhere where the veils are sell, sold in real life. <laughs> But we uh, gotta go there, and then we're just going right to the wedding. But that's the yeah. bachelor party, so let's have a ball. Right, and uh, so pretty much like everybody shows up. Harry and Maria there. Um, now that I think about, it, not really everybody. It's just Harry and Maria. Pretty much everybody that you know is there. Everybody is. Harry and I mean Wilbur didn't even decide to show up for this. No, I, I guess he didn't. But um, I mean the other sisters will be there, and not not Deborah so much, but Nara. If you marry Bianca, will be there, and and vice versa. Mm. So, so you get married, you wake up the next morning, and you're like, oh my God, we're married, and you go and see uh, Mr. Briscoletti. Now, if you, this is uh this is something that's a little different. If you take you take either of his daughters, pretty much what he'll want you to do is he'll be like, oh, you know, you're burden on him, and you should probably stay around. And they're like, no, we're going to go. So he's like, okay, I'm going to let you have this ship. you got to go to this place in the north, in the northwest. If you go down to this pot and it's blue, you can go over there. you got to tell me what the color is. So you go there, you find out it's blue. You come back, and he's like, okay, you can, uh, you can go with him. That's such a strange request out of nowhere, too, by the way. Right, like, right, imagine yeah. If you're just, imagine, like, you're on the street, and... Like and then you see I don't know like your friend's dad. You're like oh, by the way, uh, can you do me a favor? Can you go and check out the uh, check out this thing all the way downtown? Just let me know what color it is and then come back and let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty it's a it's a weird task to ask for, but it all makes sense later. Um, so at this point, I believe he gives you the Zenithian shield which he had, and he gives you a buttload of money. Mm-hmm. And he lets you have the uh, Lodestar Harbor. That's the name of the port town. Anyways, he lets you have his ship, and it's docked over there. So at this point, if you wanted to, you can warp all around and talk to people if you really want to. But if you go back to Lodestar Harbor, you get your boat. And now this is where the game opens up a little bit, where you can go and visit a different couple different things. Like uh, there's that big ship that you got married on if you married the Briscoletti sisters. It's a giant casino. Mm. Giant, giant casino. You can play... You can play uh, uh, Pachisi, or they call it TNT. You can play all different kinds of slots and all that stuff. And and then the other town, Fortuna, too. I forgot to mention that. is a big casino town. You can do all that stuff, too. So, um, y- yeah, that that's one place you can go. You can head over to this place. It's called um, the Knickknackery, which is like a side quest where you'll, co- you'll be collecting items throughout the game. They're called, like, Knickknacks. Mm-hmm. And you can pretty much go there, and then you do like this little quest where you gotta go visit the mini mini metal king, and you get, and you pretty much get, uh, like a, a knickknack there, and then you go back, and then pretty much you own it, and and you can put knickknacks all over the place. It's kind of like a, it's a little pointless side quest. There's really nothing like big that you can get from there. It's just kind of fun to collect the stuff. So yeah, you can go to there. You can go to the mini metal place. You can go to the knickknackery, and then um, you hear a lot about in Lodestar Harbor where there's a. Uh, there's a big desert to the south, and a queen over there knows something about the legendary hero. So, what you do is you go to the south, you meet, the, you go into this uh, castle, and uh, you pretty much meet this queen. And she's like, "Oh, okay, you know, I, I she kind of can tell like the future or something. She kind of like, she kind of kind of clarity or whatever, you know. She can, right. right? She's like a mystic or whatever. And so she's like, "Okay, I got this special feeling about you. Let's go see." If you're the legendary hero. Now, at this point, you're probably like, I'm not, but let's go see what she's got. So you go, she takes you upstairs, she takes you to the secret room, and boom, you get into this room, you put on the legendary helmet, and you find out that you're not the hero, of course. Right, so, we, yeah, we, like you said, we already knew that. Right, so she pretty much is like, oh, that's kind of sad, but you know what, come back, I want to I wanna help you out. So you go back, you visit her. And she pretty much says, you know, you, you your story kind of sounds familiar, you know, you're... You're the son of this father guy who is looking for his wife. You kind of sound like that guy Pancrantz. And, and you're like, oh, yeah, shit, that's my dad. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, he was the king of Gotha. So you're like, what? Gotha? And so she pretty much tells you there's this castle to the west that is Gotha where your your dad came from. So at this point, you're like, hell yeah, we'll go. So you head over to the west, and uh, you head to this inn. 
and it's pretty much like a pit stop before you head over to this huge mountain. It's probably probably one of the bigger dungeons of the game besides like the final dungeon and stuff later. But so you have to travel up this mountain. I think this would be a good time for you to say when you travel up this mountain, who's in your party? Who do you got? Okay. Okay, at this point, I would have Bianca. I would have the hero, uh, or the main character. I would have um, <clears throat> Pierre, the or whatever, Gudan, the uh, slime knight. And I would probably have... Uh, it all depends on... Uh, like, if I didn't... Because some monsters you can... It's easier to recruit than others. And, like, I would probably have, like, a brownie or even a wyvern. Because near the... Near the um, volcano you can recruit a wyvern which is a really good monster a lot of healing and it's very fast and you can also get a magician guy that does a lot of really good attack spells while you're trying to get bianca up to uh where she gets some good stuff so you head up about halfway up the mountain and you meet this old lady this is kind of like a side event i mean you don't really have to do it but you meet this old lady she's got a creepy laugh she's got all kinds of skulls and like so she's like oh you know you can sleep here for the night you go to sleep. You wake up in the middle of the night. Bianca's like, I'm just assuming that you 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 went with Bianca. Right, uh, I'll sure. just right. So we'll Bianca wakes. Yeah, yeah, we'll run with that. Right. Here. So Bianca wakes up in the middle of the night and she's like, Oh my god, I hear something sharpening in this creepy laugh. So you try to leave. She doesn't. You can't move. And then the old lady comes down and she's like, Oh, you know, I I sharpened your sword for you. And it's like what? And pretty much you gain five uh, five extra attack power for the main character. And uh, it was just kind of like a don't judge your book by its cover kind of thing. She's right. like, a lot, a lot of people don't stop by because I got, like, skulls and my laugh and all that. So uh, uh, just to mention, th- there's o- this is the only other thing that's different between the, uh, marrying Nera and Deborah versus Bianca is at the Desert Castle, uh, Mr. Briscoletti leaves you some money. He gives you money. Okay. Uh, there, there's, like, a guard that's there, and he's, like, waiting for you, and he's like, oh, here you are. Here's some money. And then when you go up halfway up the mountain, there's another guard there, and he's like, "Oh, here you are. Here's this <laughs> re- really good armor." So that might be a reason why you want to use the other the do- other. Even, do- I don't think he even knew that. I guess I only played this as B- with Bianca. Yeah, with me. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Bianca doesn't get any extra extra gear. But so we go up the ta- we go up the the uh, mountain. We reach this town. Um, oh no, maybe this town is called Battenberg. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. You reach this town. It's on top of the mountain. And uh, pretty much whoever your wife is, like I said, I'm just going to assume it's Bianca. She pretty much falls down and passes out. So the people at the uh, who are hanging out over there, they bring her in the in the town and she sleeps it off. And she's like, oh, no, I'm just, I, you know, I'm just exhausted because, of you know, freaking, you know, it's a mountain or whatever. So mm-hmm. the next morning you get up, you go across the bridge, you see Gotha in the distance and you head through the mountain. Now you're heading down, which is tricky. But when you get to the bottom, you uh, you finally make it to Gotha. Right, it's this castle, and now you can go inside and talk to some of the people, but you can't go and see the king. You find out about you know Pancrantz, who used to be the king. Now his brother, now his brother Albert is pretty much taking care of everything. And uh, so what you have to do is the only way you can go visit the king is if you meet someone that knows who you are. So you go to the, go outside the castle, and there's like a little hut, and you meet Sancho, who was uh, Pancrantz's buddy. Or a servant or whatever. Right, and he's like, to figure that out. Right, and he is so pumped that you're alive. He's like, oh my god, I can't believe you're alive. So he brings you up to the king. He meet, he tells you, hey, this is Pancrantz's son. And uh, then they ask who the lady is. And Bianca's like, I'm Bianca, I'm his wife. And then she passes out, right? Mm-hmm. She falls on the ground. You find out, come to find out that she's pregnant. Because right, they, they went right to work right after that wedding. Right, right. I think <laughs> honestly they probably screwed right on the wedding night and boom. Yeah. This is why. This is why this I was is, like, again, the timeline. This is the time thing again, though. Right, and this is why I was like, uh, like, how long could it possibly have been since the wedding, right? And then where you are now? Could it have been months? So I don't know. So should we talk about how? And I, I brought this up a little bit, uh, or I hinted at something in the previous episode of uh, Dragon Quest Five. Uh, you know, doing this show. Um, so Bianca is how old now? Bianca would be eighteen. I'm assuming. There it is. Underage yeah. actions <laughs> going on. Yeah, sixteen and eighteen. That's now. right. Uh, a lot of illegal <laughs> stuff. Unless yeah. the Dragon Quest world is more lenient with that. Who knows? Yeah, they... For all I know, they could be good with like eighteen and twelve. I don't know. 
Right, right. You see, now at this point, I honestly think that there's been a lot of time that's passed between when you were freed as a slave and then when you be- get back to Gotha. I, I honestly think it might be a year. Like, let, even if it is a year, it's still underage. You know what I mean? It's right, 17 yes, yes. and 19 or whatever. But I feel like they don't really they don't really do a good job. That's the only gripe I would have about this game is they don't really do a good job of explaining, like, how much time has gone by. Because there's another moment later on in the next generation where they say something about how many years have passed and shit. And I'm like, I'm like, what? So is, is this amount of time? So anyways, anyways, Bianca's pregnant, right? right? And we go and talk to our uncle Albert, who pretty much says, "You know what? Since you're back, your parents' kid, I want you to be the king." So the uh, chancellor pretty much puts up a hissy fit and says, "Oh no, you can't do that. You got to go to the ca- You got to go to this cave and get the get this thing. And then if you bring back this thing, you can be you can be the uh, you can be the king." So Albert's like, "All right, fine. You got to go do that." So. Uh, you know, at this point, you're kind of feeling like, eh, what's going on with this Chancellor guy here? Mm-hmm. So you so you go, you uh, you go to this place, it's called the Rite of Passage, and you get the royal uh, emblem. But as you leave, there are these guys that attack you, and they pretty much say that they don't want you to ever come back. Pretty much like, you know, they're, they're hoping to kill you, and they're pretty much like, yeah, the, you know, there's people that live in Gotha that don't want you to be king. So you beat these guys... And you go back to the castle. And at this point, everybody's pretty pumped because they're like, dude, you're going to be the king. And uh, at this point, uh, your wife is having her kids, which again, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, maybe it was an early pregnancy. I I'm mean, not this, hundred... this cave exploration must have taken seven months. Yeah, it must have <laughs> taken a long, long time. So you go upstairs, you find out that Bianca had it, uh, or well, you you pretty much do like uh, in the very beginning of the game where Pancrantz is walking around. You pretty much do that, and then you hear the babies, you go upstairs, and you find out that you had twins, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. And uh, one is a boy, one is a girl, so you get to name them. And um, pretty much uh, at that point, the king calls you down, or you... You know, you go to sleep, the king calls you down, and he's like, all right, now you're the king. And then you ha- you put on this cool cape, and then you have the Dragon Quest theme playing as you walk all around and stuff. And then you have a big party, which always happens. You have a big party. And then apparently, it- it's like you wake up in the middle of the night. It's really quiet. Everybody's asleep. You go back up to your cat. You go back up to see Bianca, and you find out she's gone missing. <laughs> Some monsters took her away, and... Pretty much everybody was asleep, and uh, it wasn't just because they were all drinking heavily, which they probably <laughs> were, but I guess there was some sleeping powder or something. And uh, what ends up happening is they sent out a search party to go look for her, and then you're like, screw it, I'm going to look for her. Right. The kids are okay, so, though, by the way. Right, yes, the kids are okay, yeah. Uh, pretty much the nanny or whatever, she hid under the bed with the kids, and uh, they didn't get captured. So, um... You pretty much leave, and you give Sancho the Zenithian sword, uh, which I don't know if ha- that happens in the original, but whatever. So you go and investigate, because the only person that's missing, besides your wife, is the Chancellor, right? So you're like, huh, he was he was acting shady before, so you go check his room, and you get these flying boots, just like in um, Dragon Quest Four with Ragnar. Oh, yeah, the flying shoes. Yeah, so you use them, and you head off to this abbey that's just north of the castle, which you can't reach because, uh, uh, you know, there's water separating it. So you find out that Bianca was taken north by monsters in the abbey. They say, oh, they saw some mysterious people going north. So you head north into this uh, tower. It's called Nightmare Tower. Now, this place is very, very dangerous. It's And the big reason why is because there's, like, these dragon heads that shoot fire, mm-hmm. and they can really they can really kill you. So as you're going up, you uh, have to encounter many, many enemies, and you fight these bosses that are pretty much like, oh, you ain't getting by, and, and there's, like, these mini bosses that are called pawns. There's, like, a pawn chimera, and then there's a pawn orc guy. And so you pretty much fight them, you defeat them, and then you get access to the horse guy, who actually has your wife there. His name is... He's Khan the Knight. K-O-N, Khan the Knight. And uh, pretty much you got to fight him. And for the first couple of... Uh, the first couple of browns, you uh, you can't do any damage to him. So it's good to defend. And uh, pretty much after a bit, Bianca jumps into the group and she like 
shoots out like energy, like friggin' energy or whatever magic waves out of her body and they break her barrier. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you pretty much at this point you can fight Khan and you beat him. So then at this point you're like, all right, you know, he was one of the guys that killed, helped kill Pancrantz. He's one third avenged. Right. Yes. So then, uh, you know, the, the, uh, a uh, horse guy's like, oh shit, you're the Zenithian kid. Uh, you're the Zenithian uh, descendant of Zenithia because you were able to break that thing. And then, and then uh, he pretty much like calls out for Laja to come, and uh, he comes down. And Laja's like, oh, you know what? There was a there was a prophecy that the legendary hero was going to be born of royal or of like noble blood. And since you guys didn't have kids, yeah, I'm just going to turn you guys into stone. So what he does is he turns the hero. And Bianca in the stone. And one thing that I forgot to mention is, as you're going up this tower, you actually meet the Chancellor, who pretty much he sided with the monsters because he. I don't know why, honestly. Why would you want? Why would you <laughs> want no monsters? Explanation given. Right. Why would you want monsters taking over the castle? But he's like, oh, I regret everything, and then it's like, of course you do, you idiot. Right. What so, was your end game there, sir? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, pretty much, you're turned into stone, and this is like one of those moments again. Where it's like, oh, it's like when your dad died, you're turned to stone. These two thieves come, they take you, you and your wife, and they're like, we're gonna, we're gonna, we got an idea for these guys. So it cuts back to the to Gotha, where Sancho and uh, the group there are uh, looking for you and Bianca, and the babies start crying. They're like, oh, the babies have never cried before, which is probably bullshit. I mean, right, babies, I think so too. Ba babies cry, you know what I mean? So. They're like, oh, don't worry, your mom and dad will be back soon. So then they cut to some arena where they're pretty much selling you and your wife for money. And so there's this one rich dude who buys you, but then they take Bianca and they're like, oh, no, I got the, the two thieves. are like, no, we got bigger plans for this guy. So you're taken back to this town or this little house, a rich house. Uh, the guy's name is is uh Mr. Porgy or something like that and then the kid's name is Georgie Porgy. Right, yes. Okay. Right. <sighs> Go ahead. So, what ends up happening is he puts he puts you out in the uh in the garden or whatever. They end up having a kid, right? Right. And oh, well, so when you, you were you a good luck statue or something like that? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh so pretty much what ends up happening is uh the lady has a kid. And they're going to name him Georgie, Georgie Porgy, or whatever. And years go by, and you kind of see this kid grow up. You get to see his first steps. You get to see him run around. You get him. You get to see him say stuff like "Mama" and "Dada" and stuff. And then, and it's kind of like, oh man, you know, that's kind of nice. I mean, if I can't see my kids grow up, at least I can see some kid grow up. You know, I, that's why I felt like this is like a really like heart twisting moment because it's like you don't get a chance to see your kids grow up, but at least you're kind of seeing this. And so what ends up happening is, like, I don't know how many years down the road it is, but these he, they're running around, the kids running around, uh, because they hear about, they kind of hear about, like, oh, there's there's bad things happening and all that. So he's running around in the garden, these monsters come, and they take him away, and the wife's inconsolable, and Mr. Porgy pretty much takes his, takes his anger out on you, like, you friggin' did anything. <laughs> So he knocks you down and pretty much leaves you there for years. And so, like, you see this, you hear the sad music, the same music you hear for for when Pancrans dies, and you just see the seasons change and years and years go by. And that's probably where I'll stop it. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a good yeah. good, 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 good time to stop. Did you wear a statue right. to end this section? Um, yeah. All right, so overall thoughts from you on this section. Uh, pretty much it's pretty fun. I mean, you go on a lot of adventures, uh, you know, you get to, you get to help out your buddy Harry and, uh, you know, you meet your wife, which is cool, which is one of the, you know, it's not often that you get to have like a moment of, like that in a video game. I mean, this is kind of a little more revolutionary. It's like, oh, you get to pick a wife and then you're going to have kids. This is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Um, one question I have that's kind of outside the story, uh, in regards to the recruiting stuff and i don't know this you, you can tell me that like you'll get to it in the next section but i don't know if you actually will um can you you i i because i don't think i knew this but apparently you can is it true that you can recruit our our my favorite hero dwight 
Uh, yeah, I'm yes, but yes, you can, but it'll be much a little later in the next, in the next generation. I'll talk about All that. Right, I yeah. definitely want to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Why don't you give your final plugs, then we'll head out. All right. So I'm in Kenshin 1913. You can check me out on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Etsy, and Patreon. Uh, you know, just type in. Kenshin 1913, and then you'll see my name, and that more than likely is me. And, you know, you can watch videos, check out Facebook and Twitter, see what I'm talking about, and all that good stuff. So, there you go. All right, very good, everyone. We'll catch you next time uh, for some more of the podcast, and we've still got the final generation of Dragon Quest V. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to the Jim Boy Star Podcast. Please visit the website www.thatspodcasting.com where you can get the latest news on all of the latest upcoming episodes of this show and you could download the archives of previous episodes and don't forget to subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher for the latest episodes coming right to you right when they're released you can also follow me at www.twitter.com slash jimboystar this is my story and thank you for being a part of it <laughs>